Welcome to this brief video on polyporous decoction, or juling tang in Chinese. This classic formula treats dampness by promoting water metabolism through diuresis. The dampness presents itself as edema with urinary problems. This formula shares three herbs with wuling san, a formula that I've covered in a separate video. Both formulas appear in Zhang Zhongjing's classic, Shang Han Lun. But juling tang is used in different circumstances to wuling san. The differences between these two formulas show us how the shang han lun informs us about Chinese herbal medicine. In this case, interpreting the meaning of certain signs and symptoms, identifying disease progress, and introducing us to the concept of a transmuted pattern. As we will see, for several reasons, in our times, juling tang serves more as a didactic formula. The formula's name comes from one of its ingredients, juling or polyporous, which is a fungus that is etymologically associated with pigs. Like wuling san, it is categorized as a formula that dispels dampness by promoting diuresis and percolating that dampness. To better differentiate between these two formulas, I will review how they are presented in the Shang Han Lun. This slide shows all the clauses referring to wuling san and juling tang. To simplify this discussion, these are the most pertinent clauses. This slide gives the text corresponding to these clauses, giving the relevant signs and symptoms for both formulas. Both wuling san and juling tang clauses include indications for fever, patient thirst, vexation, and inhibited urination. The fact that both formulas indicate somewhat similar heat-related signs and symptoms requires a little more investigation. To try to make sense of this, we need to look at the clauses at a more general level to see how the Shang Han Lun views disease progression. We should first note that the main clauses referring to Wuling San are found in the earlier Tai Yang or Greater Yang section. If we review disease progression in the Shang Han Lun, we can see that the Tai Yang section corresponds to an earlier stage of disease, affecting the Yang urinary bladder channel. On the other hand, Zhu Ling Tang is found in clauses 223, 224 and 319 of the Shang Han Lun. Clauses 223 and 224 are in the Yang Ming or Yang Brightness section, while clause 319 is in the Shao Yin or Lesser Yin section. Of these sections, the Shao Yin section implies that the disease has become more serious and progressed inwards from the urinary bladder Yang channel to the kidney Yin channel. Both of these channels are associated with water metabolism, but the kidney Yin channel is the more vital channel. This discussion gives us a good opportunity to take a deeper look at the notion of disease progression according to the Shang Han Lun. In my original video on six channel pattern identification, I only presented the simplest form of disease progression according to the Shang Han Lun. That's to say, progression according to the channel sequence. This slide lists other forms of natural disease progression that are also presented in the text. I will discuss these other forms in another video. The Shang Han Lun goes further by adding the concept of a transmuted disease. A transmuted disease results from a doctor's incorrect diagnosis or from excessive treatment that instead of healing the patient, produces a new set of signs and symptoms. Incorrect treatment can result in further damage to the body's zheng or healthy qi, producing a state of deficiency and allowing the xie qi to enter deeper into the body. The Shang Han Lun recognizes these signs and symptoms and suggests appropriate remedies. Now we can return to clause 223 in the Shang Han Lun, which describes the context for juling tang usage. We need to recognize that this clause is a continuation of the early clauses 221 and 222. Although the clauses describe slightly different signs and symptoms, they all suggest that the body has been afflicted by heat. They prescribe treatment for transmuted situations, where fluids have been damaged due to incorrect treatment that has aggravated the production of heat in the body. The differences here show that the signs and symptoms indicate constrained heat in different jiao or burners. The order of their presentation implies that these three clauses may represent a sequence in the progression of the disease. 
According to the differential diagnosis, each case will result in the recommendation of a different formula. In particular, in clause 223, the inhibited urination indicates that heat constrains water in the lower jowl, and so drooling tongue is recommended. For more information on the three jowl or burners, please see my video on Wen Bing, especially the section on Wu Ju Tong. The link is given in the description section below. I will cover the other formulas in another video. So how do the herbs used in these two formulas reflect the disease stage and their associated signs and symptoms? Both formulas use Fu Ling, Zhu Ling and Zhe Xie. We'll set these aside for the moment to understand the differences between these two formulas. Wu Ling San uses Bai Zhu and Gui Zhe. Zhu Ling Tang uses Er Jiao and Hua Shi. Let's review the properties of these four herbs. Baiju is white Atractylodes root. It is frequently found in Zhang Zhongqing's formulas. It is bitter, sweet and warm, and associated with the spleen and stomach. Like Fu Ling, it dries dampness, disinhibits water and checks sweating. As a drying herb, it should be avoided when there is heat from yin deficiency, or if fluids are exhausted. Guizhi is cinnamon twig and is one of the most discussed herbs in the Chinese pharmacopoeia, featuring prominently in many formulas in the Shanghan Nun. Guizhi is acrid, sweet, light and warm, and associated with the heart, lungs and urinary bladder channels. Guizhi induces sweat and releases the exterior. It disperses cold and stops pain, unblocks yang and promotes qi transformation. It plays many other roles, but these are outside the scope of this presentation. Like Baiju, it should be avoided when there is heat from yin deficiency. Erjiao is donkey hide gelatin. Its properties are sweet and neutral, and it is associated with the kidney, liver and lung channels. It tonifies blood, moistens lung yin, and replenishes kidney essence. I will discuss it in greater detail later in this video. Hua Shi is the mineral talcum. Its properties are sweet, bland and cold and it is associated with the stomach and urinary bladder channels. Its sweetness helps to harmonize stomach qi and alleviate irritability. Its cold nature disperses accumulated heat. Its property of blandness helps to leach out dampness. As it is slippery, it helps the lower jiao to promote urination. The actions of ruling san are to promote diuresis to drain dampness and warm yang to promote the transformation function of qi. Zhuling tang promotes diuresis, clears heat and nourishes yin. As we can see from this comparison, the herbs of Zhuling tang make it a colder formula than Wuling san. This, however, prompts the question as to why warming herbs are used in Wuling san when its signs and symptoms indicate heat. Both Bai Zhu and Gui Zhe are qi herbs which makes them suitable for treatment at an early stage of disease. Baiju tonifies and augments spleen qi. Guizhi unblocks yang qi and balances qi at the body's exterior. Wuling San deals with the situation where xie qi is still located relatively at the exterior. It is still at the early stages of the disease, even though it has advanced from the channel to the tai yang organ itself, that is, the urinary bladder and impairs its water managing function. The disease can still be resolved by correcting how the body regulates its qi, and both Bai Zhu and Gui Zhe play important roles in this activity. Er Jiao, on the other hand, tonifies blood and is suitable for a situation where there is deficiency. This deficiency has come about because the disease has already eroded the body's zheng qi. Hua Shi clears heat, and its slippery property promotes urination. In both formulas, Fu Ling, Zhu Ling and Zhe Xie help eliminate water accumulation and strengthen the diuretic function. I mentioned earlier that Zhu Ling Tang should be viewed as a didactic formula, which mainly helps us to understand the Shanghan Nun. Because of the nature of Er Jiao and Hua Shi, special care is required for the preparation of this formula. Hua Shi is used in powder form and as a mineral it does not dissolve. It is usually placed in a separate cloth bag during decoction, and we can assume that when it is removed, 
microscopic particles remain in suspension in the liquid. The instructions in the Shanghan Lun state that first all the ingredients excluding Erjiao should be boiled, bringing the volume down from 4 sheng to 2 sheng. Erjiao should then be entirely dissolved in the resulting strained mixture. Erjiao must be kept separate from Hua Shi. As a gelatin, it needs to be dissolved completely and so the decoction takes quite some time to prepare. In the West, patients are already reluctant to spend time preparing decoctions, and having additional constraints makes things even more difficult, especially since treating dampness usually takes an extended amount of time. And there are further issues with Erjiao. As it is gelatin made of donkey hide, this is usually unappealing to Western tastes. In China, on the other hand, Apart from being a medicinal, it is also regarded as a luxury confectionery. The best quality is said to come from Dong E in Shandong. It's made from the hide of black donkeys and is prepared with water from the wells in that region. Erjiao can be found not only in pharmacies, but also in luxury Chinese department stores, together with high-end traditional medicinals that are said to promote beauty, youth or longevity. Erjiao's link with beauty comes from its ability to promote blood and moisten yin. It is commonly offered as a gift in a form where it is mixed with nuts. The popularity of this product has created further controversy as donkeys have become an expensive, much sought after source material. A 2022 report from the Animal Welfare Institute states that donkeys are being killed in unprecedented numbers to fulfill the high demand for Erjiao. In my experience, this product continues to be available in China, the United States and in France. It is not available in the United Kingdom. This formula is still taught today to students of traditional Chinese medicine, but for all these reasons, it should never be prescribed to patients and should remain, as stated before, a didactic formula. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you'll join me for further videos in this series. Thank you.